What's going on, friends? Harley Fuel Systems for years have relied on that one single carburetor. Now, while that one single carburetor is very reliable and it does have a lot of positives about it, it's always had one big disadvantage. Then along came fuel injection. Now, love or hate the fuel injection systems, they do have some major benefits over the carburetor. And, well, the idle is not one of them. The Harley fuel system relying on that single carburetor has worked flawlessly for years. Not to mention, you cannot beat the lope of a carburetor-fed Harley-Davidson idling down around 6, 7, 800 RPM. <laughs> Depending on how brave you're willing to set that idle down without completely losing oil pressure and basically starving the system for oil. But the carburetor had some disadvantages that, well, fuel injection solved, and as we all know, in the motorcycle world, you gotta give something up for something. Guys, don't forget, if you enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Harley's single carburetor setup is absolutely perfect for ease of maintenance, tuning, and just not to mention, you can literally do pretty much all of this on the side of the road if you had to. It's just that easy to access and basically deal with. Harley-Davidson with the single carburetor basically means you don't have the dual carb setup to feed both cylinders, which is buried underneath the gas tank. So basically, you pretty much have to remove the gas tank, dig for those carburetors, then you got to fish them out of there, and not to mention, you also got to sink them as well. We all know the rear cylinder on a Harley-Davidson always has and always will run just a little bit hotter than the front cylinder. And if you've been around Harley-Davidson long enough, you may have had the opportunity to see a rear cylinder that is actually overheated and seized. Now, don't get me wrong, this is something that could possibly happen, but to make that happen, you would really have to work really hard to overheat that rear cylinder. The disadvantage of the single carburetor is that it's actually doing double duty having to feed fuel to both cylinders. Now, obviously, both cylinders have different needs with the front cylinder running cooler and the rear cylinder running hotter. With the single carburetor, we don't have the advantage of being able to tune both of those cylinders individually. Now, even with the single carb doing double duty, if you have an excellent tuning setup, it's really not that big of an issue on a Harley. You're still going to get great fuel economy, and you're still going to make excellent power. When the fuel injection systems came along with the Delphi system, we still have one air inlet. All the air is fed through a single throttle body, but the fuel injection offers one big advantage. We have one injector per cylinder. With having one injector per cylinder, this allows us to treat each cylinder as its own engine, and we can tune each cylinder individually. Having that one injector per cylinder, this opened up a whole new avenue and a whole new range of possibilities when it came to tuning a Harley-Davidson. With this new setup being able to control the fuel individually to each cylinder, this is why you actually see carbureted bikes kind of lag behind fuel-injected bikes with the exact same setup when it comes to peak horsepower and torque numbers. Now, unfortunately, we do have to give up that wonderful Harley-Davidson lope that we always had at idle. <laughs> because with the fuel injection and to keep the top of the engine properly lubricated, to maintain proper oil pressure at idle, these bikes really need to idle at 1,000 RPM. For sure, not lower than 900. You get below 900 RPM, you run the risk of starving the engine for oil at idle. On the bright side, fuel injection starts very easily, it idles really smooth, it gives you crisp throttle response, and not to mention it's maintenance free. Well, theoretically. Tuning a fuel injected motorcycle is super simple once you get the hang of using a flash tuner, and not to mention just a basic canned map that you can flash to your bike within a couple of minutes. This can be closer and a more accurate tune than you could ever get within hours of messing with a carburetor trying to get a bike dialed in. I would say that's an arguable point because I have seen bikes dialed in with a butt dyno running up and down the road and coming back and making adjustments on a carburetor. Then we throw it on a dyno to see if we could squeeze any more out of it. And they were pretty dang close, but these, guys, these were the old grumpy guys in the back of the dealer. So when it comes to tuning with fuel injection, 
the Power Vision has always really kind of been the gold standard over the Vance and Hines Fuel Pack 3. But even today, which is interesting, Dinojet has made some changes to their Power Vision. Dinojet has just recently come out with their Power Vision 4. And with the Power Vision 4, this is set up much like the FP3, but the new Dinojet Power Vision 4 has a lot of advantages over the FP3. And once again, Vance and Hines has now come out with a new fuel pack, the Fuel Pack 4. And we'll go into that here in just a minute. Now, don't panic. The new Power Vision 4 is still just as functional as the original Power Vision, but it does everything wirelessly. And instead of having everything self contained in a screen on the unit, you're actually going to use your phone like you would with the FP3. So, with Dinojet's new Power Vision 4, they have kind of persuaded you pretty easily to buy the new wireless version versus the old one. On the original Power Vision, they've actually raised the price to about $700, where you can get their new wireless Power Vision 4 for about $380. So for me, the choice is pretty clear. And if I'm going to spend $700 on a Power Vision, I might as well spend an extra $300 and pop for a Thunder Max. Now what Dinojet has done is they've went to a wireless setup where you're actually going to use an app on your phone or tablet to tune, just like we were doing with the FP3. But the difference between the FP3 and the FP4 and the new Dinojet Power Vision 4 is that the Dinojet system still retains all of that functionality that we enjoyed with the original Power Vision. So this means when you actually go to flash the motorcycle, that one Power Vision unit is not locked down to that bike. You can actually still buy licenses to tune other motorcycles. And the best part about it is, you can still do that right there on the spot through your phone with the app. So that way you can do it all on the app and you're ready to go ahead and tune another bike. Which is a huge benefit because even with Vance and Hyde's new Fuel Pack 4, once you flash that to a motorcycle, you, you tune a bike with that, it is now married to that bike forever. So whatever you do with that bike, that tuner's got to go with it. Or if you decide to get a Power Vision later, well, pretty much you're just ate the cost on the FP4. Now the part I still like about the Power Vision is Dinojet says you can take their new Power Vision 4 to any shop that supports Dinojet and you can actually still get your bike dyno tuned by that shop even with their new wireless setup. Which probably means they're just going to plug that into your bike the traditional way and do it all through the computer. Now as I mentioned Vance and Hines has come out with an updated version of the Fuel Pack 3 in the Fuel Pack 4. And so far, from what I could tell, the unit is just a little bit smaller. They've improved the auto-tuning. They got a new app to it. But as I mentioned, still, once again, it marries to the bike. There's no tuning licenses available. And kind of the same old story with the Fuel Pack 3. It's going to be the same with the Fuel Pack 4. Like right now, they're saying that it doesn't support any big bore kits or camshafts. But that's just at the time I'm making this video. It's pretty new. So hopefully that's going to be coming down the line. I personally like the Vance and Hines products myself, but my honest opinion is they really need to catch up to where the Power Vision's at with the tuning licenses and the flexibility of being able to get your bike dyno tuned. Fuel injection on Harleys really does have some big benefits, and technology keeps moving forward. Even the tuners that we use on these bikes are getting simpler to use, and just as we see now, Dinojet and Vance and Hines, they both come out with the fourth generation of their fuel tuners. But at the same time, guys, I still believe in the good old vulnerable carburetor. Those carburetors, I, you know, they're going to be around as long as the cockroaches are crawling on the ground. These things just work. And as long as we can feed them gasoline, it's still going to be a very viable alternative to fuel injection. You can get a carburetor tuned in just as well as fuel injection, in my opinion. My biggest issue with a fuel injection system on a Harley is that, yeah, they work great. They're super reliable but it's that point in time where they don't work. I'm out on the side of the road, great, I can find the code, I can trace down the problem, but unless you have a sensor or a connector in your back pocket, you're pretty much SOL on the day and you're calling somebody to come pick you up. So guys, fuel injection does have a lot of great benefits, there's a lot of great technology in there, but at the end of the day, the good old carburetor is not dead yet. I know the government's been trying to kill the carburetor for years, but it just keeps crawling back. 
As I mentioned, as long as we can feed it gasoline, this thing's going to be around forever. And we're going to keep using them. But anyhow, guys, that's all I've got for you today. If you guys enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel. But guys, until next week, you guys stay safe on the streets. Ride smart, dodge those cars, and I'll catch you guys back here next week with a brand new video. Thanks for watching. Mm.